I was just about to are are we still on that question of like do we know what good and evil is like for the question on the powerpoint yes we can be okay i was just gonna say like well from a christian perspective we feel like we do know what good and evil are because we have the objective moral values laid out for us and and founded and grounded for us in the word of god so as a christian i would say yeah i do know what's objectively objectively good and evil um are you objective but, gary huh are you objective um am i objective yes uh no not perfectly so but we know even if the bible the is from the objective word of God. which i'm not going to concede to you it is but if we said the bible is the objective um absolute word of god you as a subjective human coming to that text are going to bring your biases, your experiences, your world views with you. Right, but that doesn't just discount like what the word of God says and what God wants us to know about his character through it. No, like, but what I'm saying is how can you as a subjective being come to an objective truth about God simply by reading a book that talks about God um so okay are you like a Christian trying to challenge my views or are you like an like an <laughs> atheist like I'm just trying to get you to think about because I hear people all the time roll the Bible out like here's this authoritative tome because and all you the, just need all... to follow it and listen to it and obey and i'm just because thinking, all well... scripture because all scripture was breathed by god it was written by humans but it was breathed to the prophets by god okay but the That's... point i'm trying to get to gary is even if the bible is given by revelation like it's information coming to the people that wrote it that is not coming from their own reason their own experiences but god is giving them this stuff to communicate to us what i'm trying to get you to think about is how are we going to accurately interpret what they wrote down unless we have that same spirit of god within us that's kind of like the idea of what was how given we can... revelation is that oh, like the yeah. holy spirit go back to Ta was it tawny Sorry, Joel wrote something good in the chat too, but I was going to say it's kind of like how we can misinterpret someone's text message to us and put the wrong tone or meaning behind it, right? Yes. Yeah, this is way more than a text message. Well, I think too, you have people, you have people like John MacArthur who are like, you know, very in the word and, you know, the context, historical context, but then you have people like R.C. Sprawl or, um, the, and they'll, they'll differ in their opinions on what the text means even people who are like extremely well studied, uh, they'll still differ in opinion based on their perception of what God's word is saying. Yes. And they both, both the names you gave have an incredibly high reverence for the Bible. And they're not trying to diminish it at all, but they, unless we, it's, to me, that is the difference between the Bible being illumined to us by the Holy Spirit and us simply using our own reason, our own training, our own education, our own experiences to try to decipher what the Bible means. And you probably had this happen to you in your own life where you've read a verse or a passage for years, but then one day it's almost like the Holy Spirit has pulled the veils off your eyes and all of a sudden this verse is piercing you to your very soul and it's bringing, it's transforming your life. And I'm not positing that it wasn't the word of God until it was illuminated to you, but I'm saying it doesn't become efficacious to you personally as an individual subject until that Holy Spirit reveals to you what was given by revelation before. Can you sit with that, Gary? Can you say that? Again, <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is if if we're positing that this 
scripture is given by revelation from God, what I'm saying is without that same spirit within you, you are not going to accurately interpret what that revelation is. You're going to interpret it based on your culture, your education, your life experiences, your level of intelligence, all those sorts of things are going to contribute. And I would say distort what the message of God is. I mean, a classic example would be both the North and the South in the United States during the Civil War were using the same scriptures, one to try to abolish slavery and the other to say it is given and regulated by God. And these are people using the same scriptures, but because of their culture, because of their economics, because of their own biases and prejudices, they both had really different takes on the same passages. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think you can look into the Bible and based on your own culture, like critique it, of course. But like at the same time, like with the whole, do I know what good and evil is like, like then we get into the argument of subjective moral, subjective morality versus objective morality. And, what I tell people when they argue for subjective morality is like, oh, okay, well then, um, like, like, give me your credit card right now. Like, give me your credit card. Oh, because in my culture, taking your credit card and going to Vegas with it is okay. You know, and then they're naturally like, no, why would I do that? And I'm like, exactly. Like, you have, like, something within you saying that that's wrong. And there's even been studies done on babies with like, with like little like bunny rabbit puppet shows, like the babies, they will not play with the like mean bully rabbit and they will even want it punished. So it's kind of like this, it's kind of like this combination of we know what's right, but we also have this pride that says like, oh, like we're the punishers, you know what I mean? So it's like, it just reveals when I study that, it just reveals the Bible is true. But all those examples you just gave me, Gary, are subjective. Like the credit card yes. example. That's like, no, that's mine. That's my money. I don't want you to take it. Um, with the babies wanting something that's scaring them, they want it away from them. I, I, I would say neither of those are still broaching the topic of actual good and evil. They're still just perspectival based on our personal desires or what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not a professional philosopher. I'm just like giving you what I think. So that's fine. I appreciate it so much. And if we do a, an ethics talk someday, we will get into all those different from more subjective to more objective or reason based or authorian authoritarian based ethical theories and and i would love to have that conversation with you but right now with the problem of evil i just want you to see how difficult it is when we're having these conversations because it is so personal and we're reacting to it in a visceral way because i'm sure by this stage in all your lives you have had some evil come upon you or people you love or care about and it hits us at the core of our being, and it raises the kind of questions that have been raised so far in this class. Right, let's let's go on.